I froze in front of my sister's closet, my hand hovering over the plaid skirt. I didn't know she had been watching me the whole time. Tyler, she whispered, her voice dripping with amusement. I've seen the way you look at my clothes. Do you want to know what it feels like to be a girl? I stammered, trying to deny it, but her eyes gleamed. No more hiding. I'm going to turn you into a perfect little schoolgirl, and don't think for a second you're getting out of this. She reached for the uniform, her smirk growing wider. My heart raced. What had I just gotten myself into? My breath hit. A mix of nerves and excitement? I didn't want to admit it, not even to myself. But the thought of her dressing me up, of finally getting to wear those clothes, her clothes, sent a rush of adrenaline through me. I could already feel my fingers itching to touch the fabric again. She didn't wait for me to respond. With a mischievous grin, she rummaged through her closet and pulled out a long, flowing blonde wig. Sit, she ordered pointing to the edge of the bed. Without thinking, I obeyed. My heart raced as she stood behind me, adjusting the wig over my head. The soft strands of blonde hair cascaded down my shoulders, brushing against my neck. I reached up to touch it, twirling a lock of hair around my finger, feeling a strange thrill run through me. It felt right, and I knew she noticed look at you, she murmured, stepping in front of me with a gleam in her eyes. You're already loving this, aren't you? She reached out and gently brushed a few strands of hair from my face, her fingers lingering for a moment. You're going to make such a pretty girl. I tried to swallow the lump in my throat, but it didn't help. My mind was spinning, trying to process everything that was happening. Did she really know? How much had she seen? But I didn't have time to dwell on it. She was already pulling out a set of eyelash extensions from her makeup drawer. Close your eyes, she said, her tone firm but playful. I obeyed, feeling the weight of the lashes as she carefully applied them. With each gentle press, I felt myself slipping further into this new identity, the lines between who I was and who I wanted to be blurring more and more. My breath caught in my throat when I opened my eyes. Everything looked different, like I was seeing the world through someone else's eyes. You're adorable, she said, standing back to admire her work. But we're just getting started. My excitement was bubbling over now, though I tried to keep it in check. She was right. I was loving this, maybe more than I should have been. But the thrill, the rush of finally being dressed up like this, of being transformed, was overwhelming. She grabbed a foundation brush and started blending it over my face. We need to soften you up, she teased, dabbing carefully at my skin. Can't have anyone thinking you're still a boy. Her words sent a shiver down my spine. The thought of being completely disguised, of no one recognizing me, it was thrilling. I twirled another lock of my blonde wig between my fingers almost unconsciously as she worked. I couldn't help it. It just felt so good. When she finished with the makeup, she stepped back and studied my face like an artist admiring her masterpiece. Almost there, she said with a grin. Then, without warning, she grabbed her epilator and switched it on with a sharp buzz. I froze. Wait, what are you- she held it up with a wicked smile. We can't have hairy legs if you're going to wear this, can we? She dangled the plaid skirt in front of me like a challenge. My heart raced. No, wait. I tried to backpedal, but she was already moving toward me with the epilator. Too late for second thoughts, Ty. She teased, running the device over my legs with precision. The sharp sting of the epilator was nothing compared to the rush of smooth skin it left behind. With each pass, my legs transformed, becoming softer, more feminine, and my excitement only grew. By the time she finished, I could barely breathe from the anticipation. Stand up, she commanded, and I did, shakily rising to my feet. She handed me the uniform, the plaid skirt, and a crisp white blouse. Put this on, she said, her eyes glinting with satisfaction. I took the outfit feeling the fabric between my fingers again, my pulse quickening. 
I stepped into the skirt, pulling it up my freshly smoothed legs and fastened it around my waist. The blouse came next, its soft material sliding over my skin as I buttoned it up, feeling the transformation with every step. When I was done, I looked at myself in the mirror, and the girl staring back at me took my breath away. My sister's grin widened. Look at you, she said, almost in awe. You're perfect. I twirled a lock of hair around my finger again, unable to stop myself. I liked how I looked, more than I ever thought I would. It wasn't just a costume, it felt like I was becoming who I was meant to be. But then she pulled out the final touches, a pair of white knee-high socks and shiny black Mary Janes. You'll need these, she said with a grin, tossing them to me. I slid the socks up my legs, feeling the soft material hug my skin, then buckled the shoes, the click of the straps echoing in the quiet room. My sister stepped back, her eyes gleaming with pride. You're my little schoolgirl now, she whispered, circling around me as if inspecting her creation. I bet no one would even recognize you now. I swallowed, my throat dry. You're not, you're not really going to make me go out like this, are you? Her smirk widened and she leaned in close, her breath warm against my ear. Oh, Tyler, she whispered, her voice dripping with amusement. I've got a little surprise for you. She stepped back, her eyes gleaming as she pulled out her phone. Guess what? I booked us an appointment at Fancy Fingers Nail Salon. My heart skipped a beat and my stomach dropped. Wait, what? I stammered, already knowing where this was going. She leaned in again, her voice soft but teasing. You know who works there, right? Lisa. My mouth hung open. My crush, Lisa, the girl I'd spent countless hours daydreaming about, was going to see me like this? Dressed as a girl, completely transformed? I could feel the blood draining from my face. E you booked it on purpose, didn't you? I managed to stutter. Her smirk deepened, confirming my worst fears. Of course I did, she said with a giggle. Don't worry, though. Lisa won't even recognize you. We'll introduce you as Tanya, and she'll be none the wiser. You're going to love it. I was about to protest, but the look in her eyes told me it was pointless. There was no turning back now. My heart raced, my mind spinning at the thought of Lisa seeing me like this, and yet, deep down, a part of me, the part that had secretly loved this entire transformation, was excited, nervous, but excited. We stepped outside, and as we walked toward the salon, I couldn't help but notice how different everything felt. The soft swish of the skirt against my legs, the breeze playing with the blonde wig, and the way people glanced at me. None of them realizing I was Tyler, the awkward boy who used to be invisible. Now, with every step I took, I felt eyes on me, and for the first time in my life, I felt noticed. I twirled a strand of my blonde hair, my nerves gradually fading as excitement bubbled up inside me. I felt new, like a different person entirely. When we arrived at Fancy Fingers, my heart pounded as I saw Lisa's bright, welcoming smile. She was even more beautiful in person, her long, dark hair cascading over her shoulders, her eyes sparkling as she greeted us. Hey, good to see you again she said, recognizing my sister instantly. But then her eyes turned to me, and I held my breath. My sister smiled slyly. Lisa, this is my friend Tanya, she said, casually placing a hand on my shoulder. She's been dying to get her nails done. Lisa gave me a friendly smile, completely oblivious. Nice to meet you, Tanya, she said, her voice soft and warm. Come on over. We'll get you all set up. I felt a jolt of nervousness as I sat down, but it quickly faded as Lisa began to work on my nails. Her touch was gentle, and as she chatted with me and my sister, I found myself relaxing, the conversation flowing naturally. Lisa had no idea who I really was, and somehow that made it easier. I could talk to her freely, without the pressure of being Tyler. 
For the first time ever, I wasn't the awkward boy with a secret crush. I was Tanya, confident and carefree. As Lisa painted my nails, the scent of polish filling the air, I couldn't help but steal glances at her, my heart fluttering with every smile she gave me. The way she complimented my hands, how delicate they were, made me feel special. I caught myself smiling, twirling a strand of my blonde hair around my finger, loving the attention, loving the way she made me feel. It was surreal. Here I was, sitting with my crush, having the most normal, fun conversation, and she had no idea who I really was. It felt good, better than I'd expected. I was so caught up in the moment, laughing with Lisa as she gently filed my nails, that I almost forgot the reality of the situation. Almost. Then, out of nowhere, she paused, her eyes narrowing as she studied my face. A frown tugged at her lips. You know, there's something about you that seems really familiar. My heart skipped a beat. The air around us seemed to thicken as she leaned in slightly, staring right into my eyes. I could feel my sister tensing beside me, her smirk faltering for just a second. Lisa's gaze flicked between the two of us, her brows furrowing even deeper. Wait! Don't take this the wrong way. But you kinda look like someone I know. I swallowed hard, my pulse pounding in my ears. Oh? Who? Your brother, she said suddenly, turning to my sister. Doesn't she look like your brother, Tyler? Are you sure she isn't family or something? I swear, it's uncanny. My stomach dropped. My worst nightmare was unfolding right in front of me. I could feel the blood drain from my face, my hands trembling slightly in my lap. Lisa's eyes were filled with curiosity now, and I knew I was one wrong word away from being exposed. My sister, always quick on her feet, let out a light laugh, flipping her hair casually. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I get that a lot. Tanya's actually an old friend from out of town, but I guess she does kind of look like Tyler, now that you mention it. She shot me a look, daring me to back her up. I nodded, trying to suppress the panic rising in my throat. Y yeah, I'm from a small town a few hours away. Maybe that's why we look alike. Small gene pool or something, I joked awkwardly, forcing a smile. It was a terrible attempt at humor, but I was desperate. For a moment, Lisa didn't say anything. She just kept staring, and I could feel the sweat forming on my palms. My sister nudged me under the table, her eyes urging me to stay calm. My breath was shallow, waiting for Lisa to either call me out or move on. Then, thankfully, she let out a soft chuckle and shook her head. Wow, I guess it's just one of those weird coincidences. I was about to say, if you two were related, your family must have some seriously strong genes. I let out a breath I didn't realize I'd been holding. My sister grinned, relief evident in her eyes. Yeah, strong genes and good looks, right? She teased, flipping her hair again and sending me a wink. Lisa laughed, the tension broken, and went back to working on my nails. Well, Tanya, you've got a great sense of style. These nails are going to look perfect with your outfit. I smiled weakly, still recovering from the scare. Thanks, I mumbled, my heart still racing. That had been way too close. A huge thank you to our amazing Patreon supporters, for exclusive 18-plus content that's too spicy for YouTube, early access to our videos, and a special shout-out in our credits, join us on Patreon. Click the link in the description to sign up and unlock all the exciting extras. Hope you enjoyed this story, and if you're looking for a daily escape into the world of cross-dressing, subscribe now and enjoy new stories every single day.